Good morning. Good morning, my queens. Thank you for joining. And if you're a guy, welcome as well. Thank you for joining. Thank you for wanting to learn more. And thank you for wanting to better yourself. Because when we better ourselves, guess what? The world gets better. Doesn't it? I usually give everybody about a minute to join and then we get going. How's your weekend? Guys, I am just in awe at how much money my group has manifested in the $100,000 challenge. I, I'm, I'm just like in awe because we're probably closer to 200000 So if you guys don't know what it is, um, my Facebook group, we gave them a challenge and the challenge was manifest 100000 combined group goal um, in April. But it has to be from unexpected sources. So it cannot be your regular sources of income, your sales, your salary, your bonus, your husband, none of that, right? Nothing that you expect. And, and so it has to be unexpected money. And I am telling you that there's only like 200 people in the group, right? And obviously not everybody has manifested, but the people have manifested in quite like at least 50 people have written that they have manifested. The total right now is like... I want to say around 170 and that's from the beginning of the month. This is unexpected money. This is not income, right? So I, I just think this is amazing. You know, the power of the group, we call something in and it happens. We call it in. The group is more powerful than the individual always, right? We always know this. We know this from science, religion, the more, the more force and horsepower you give a car, the faster it drives, right? The, the more power you give energetically, the faster things turn around. And yeah, you're right. You can't pinpoint the individual, but the group itself is benefited by these ideas. So I'm, I'm really happy to see the results. I actually, I, you know, even when I put it out, I had a little bit of a doubt. I'm like, can I really put out a hundred thousand dollar goal for the group and you know I was feeling like a little bit of doubt I was like I know we can do it of course we can do it because that's only like $500 each um, but then I was like gosh come on like it's it sounds like a lot and then I convinced myself I was like it's not a lot at all it's not a lot you know and this is how you you have to work through your manifestations your conscious mind will tell you no it's not for you it's too much it's like she'll never like you he'll never like you he has somebody better than you you're not worth a 20 percent pay increase you're not you know your mind will just completely convince you out of a goal but see because I expect that I'm always ready to reason with my mind. And I'm always ready to reason in the opposite and be like, nope, yeah, you're, you, you, you're like, you can make your point, but I choose to believe differently. You can make whatever point based on whatever paradigms you still have in there that I haven't been able to change, but I'm not accepting it. It's the key to reality is you don't accept that which you don't want. You keep calling in that which you want, right? Guys, I'm going to tell you the biggest secret in reality creation and manifestation is the fact that you cannot take your input from your output. 3D is the output. Everything I see now, the circumstances I'm in now, the relationships, income, health, body, friendships, this is all the results of the past. There are 3D printout of the contents of my mind, my then mind, which I can change tomorrow, really. This is why people who have deep, this is the best examples because they're very visible, deep spiritual awakenings, deep religious awakenings, sometimes um, they're able to have a life that's 180 than they did before. And this is people mostly that you hear in, you know, like in social media that they had trouble. They were criminals. They were really bad sleeping in cars and, you know, their lives are transformed. This is all has to do with the changing of the paradigm and changing of your mind. Right. I want to change my reality. She says, I know I can, but still, by still what? Do not take your input from the output, guys. Guys, it's the printout. You wouldn't look at a printout of a sheet of paper and be like, okay, I guess that's how it is. And it has spelling mistakes and it has the paragraphs are not aligned. What would you do if that happened, right? Would you be like, I guess it is what it is? No, you wouldn't. You would take it. You'd be like, oh my God, let me go back to the computer, make these changes, 
correct these errors and reprint it. And it's the same thing, right? You just have to reprint this reality, but you can't do it from looking at it. You can't do it on the piece of paper that you just printed. You have to do it from going back to the computer, going back to the source where the mistakes were made and make those corrections, print it again. Now look at it again. Now maybe still some, some mistakes or new mistakes in it or, or some, you go back in again, you make those changes again, you reprint it. That's how it works. That's how it works, right? I know this is <laughs> started to think of reality that way. It, it requires a lot of inner power and inner will. Like your inner will has to be strong to go against everything that you've learned. Somebody asked me on one of my videos today. He says like, do you, I, I think it was a video of reality being a simulation and how you have to choose to be a player because otherwise you're an NPC. Maybe I'll pin that video. It, it has such a major concept in it. And somebody was like, do you, what, is this your theory or do you have solid proof of it? And I just laughed when I saw that message in the morning. It's like, you have solid proof of it. First of all, nothing is solid, <laughs> right? We're not even solid. And then um, I want you to think of how many scientific solid discoveries have been overturned with the um, understanding of quantum, quantum physics and quantum mechanics and how um, reality is neither a wave nor a particle. This was proven about 100 years ago, but the experiment still fascinates me. If you guys don't know what it is, it's called a double slit experiment. You can just Google a five minute, uh, five minute video on it and you'll understand it. Reality doesn't want to be understood, guys. It doesn't want to be solid. It doesn't want to make sense to you. It will just form around whatever instructions you give it but it won't let you understand it. The more you try to understand reality, the more you're going to get conflicting information. And this is obvious in science, not in Newtonian science, because that's just basic science to just survive. But in any science that matters, that creates reality, this, this is the truth. Scientists find conflicting information all the time. Let's see. I'll just stop here, see if there's any questions. If not, I read out some Q&A. And if you guys emailed me a Q&A, if you're in my group, um, please only email me if you're in my group. Um, you know, sometimes I take up these questions if I feel they're to the highest benefit of the group, if the group can learn something from it. Somebody um, sent me an email and said, can you please explain the concept of paying yourself first? because I talked about it in, in a previous live. So paying yourself first means this. When, like in, in 3D, it means literally with money, right? So in 3D, when you get your paycheck, people, what do you usually do with your paycheck? You put it in the bank and you start paying other people, right? You start paying your landlord, you start paying the credit card company, you start paying other people, right? Very few people are disciplined enough to pay themselves first to, you know, put that 10% or 5% from their paycheck, pretend they don't have it. If your paycheck is $2,000, take two, $300, pretend you don't have it and put it into an investment for yourself. And my point about paying yourself first was the same idea with our most valuable resource. Do you guys know what our most valuable resource is? You all know that, right? You, you know that intrinsically if, you know, no, nobody tells us that in school, but we know that intrinsically that our most valuable resource is our time, our time. We can't make more of that. We can make more of anything except time is not infinite, not while in this body, right? So with our time, you have to pay yourself first also. When you start the day, you start giving your time, just like, you know, when you pay your bills, you pay your bills, you have to dedicate to pay yourself first. So what time are you dedicating that is going to you first? So you got your paycheck today when you woke up, you got, well, not 24 hours because you sleep for eight. Okay. So you got the next 16 hours, which are now, I don't know, less because you already lived like five hours. So how have you paid yourself first? The best way to pay yourself first is in the morning and maybe a smaller part of your practice at night. But what you cannot do is you cannot start investing in yourself after you've done everything else. A boss of mine, when I was very young and in corporate, told me something I'll never forget, and it's true. The admin 
the time you spend on admin tasks takes as much as you let it take, right? So you actually don't get to do any productive work. You can spend your whole day doing admin. Admin for the business, admin for around the house. There's always another bed to be made. There's always like some dust there you have to take care of. Somebody's always hungry. You know, there's all, these are admin tasks. These are not, they're not productive work that you do on yourself. So um, pay yourself first means you have to dedicate time to yourself as a priority. You have to be your own priority. And this is, this is good advice, you know, even if you want other people to prioritize you. There's no way. You can do everything for everyone and then at the end of the day be like, oh, I'm going to take half an hour to meditate. Because in the majority of those cases, you're, you're going to feel too tired to meditate. You're going to feel too tired to do any practice, to connect, to think about it. It's hard to now switch from, you know, this and Timmy's homework and, you know, my husband wanting something from me to, to just like, now let me have a few moments to myself before I fall asleep. Forget it. What's in your mind is the day, is the day or it's tomorrow. It's the worries of tomorrow. So forget it. You're not going to go anywhere living, living that way. All right. Let me see if there's anything here. And then if not, I'll move to the questions that I'm taking up that are to the benefit of all. Um, do not take input for input. Yeah. Um, let's see. Good morning. Good morning. What would you do if your business is not going well? For one month, what would you change? I find this question to be too loose, right? Because there's um, there is elements you can take in 3D and change about any business, obviously, by understanding what's not working about it. But if you feel that you're doing everything right and it's still not working, you have to do the work that I'm talking about, about the inner work about yourself. And the first thing you have to do in the inner work, queen, is you got to understand what's in there. Like what's in there? Like we're so quick to be like, oh, I want to try this technique to manifest. I'm going to write 369, 369. But you have no idea what's in here. Your paradigm is different than my paradigm. Maybe somebody's paradigm, they were raised in a business family and they see business ups and downs. They know it's always going to come back up because they've been raised that way. They observe that. If you haven't observed that, your first month that it's going bad, you're like, this is not working out, right? That may be your paradigm. Your paradigm is like, I'm not, I'm not good enough for this. Forget it. There's other people. There's too much competition because you don't have the right paradigm. You've only seen your parents completely, you know, living from paycheck to paycheck, etc. This is why, you know, you, this question cannot be easily answered. You have to spend time with yourself to understand. I have a 100 question questionnaire in my bio. Everybody should do that. It's honestly, it's equal like one, one hour of life coaching slash therapy, in my opinion. And, you know, I know people in my group have already done it. So if you've done it, um, maybe you can just say if you, if you like it. Um, and, uh, and, and then we take it from there. Um, is it free? No, it is not free. I do my free work with animals at the animal shelter. That's where I volunteer. This is work. Get it? I'm worth being compensated for my work. All right. So let's go to the questions. The questions are the first one we answered. I have, I think I have three questions. Okay. So this queen says, in regards to timeline jumping, she's doing the 60 day challenge in my bio. In regards to timeline jumping, if I am working on raising my vibration in order to access my manifestation with my desired SP, do I let go of them while I'm out of alignment? I have tried many things, law of assumption, treatment, talking to other SPs, so I am not as focused on them. This has been very long relationships. There have been a lot of fights and self-sabotage. I keep manifesting SPs and that, that would be great matches. I keep manifesting SPs that would be great matches if I desire them. But my desired lifestyle does not exist with this guys. And I want, basically, she wants her old SP. When I focus on the feeling, I manifest that in the new SPs very quickly. But I don't see that as sustainable because what I truly want is a certain guy on a different timeline that I'm working towards, but it's not currently reflected in 3D. So there's a lot of confusion in this question, but the good news in this question is she is able to manifest everything she feels and she does the work my way, I'm assuming, in, in the 60 day challenge. So she's focusing on herself and very quickly. Other guys, new guys are showing this in her, in her 3D, 
right? So she says that like three times in the email. These guys are conforming, but my old SP is not conforming. And guys, I have an SP list and I have a very different approach to the SP than everybody. The everybody in the law of assumption community and everybody just I'll just keep assuming that you're on a different timeline with him and you know this this and that and um, then you're going to jump on that timeline first of all in regards to timelines the timeline you're on is the only timeline you can occupy as the person that you are today right the person that you are today your energetic signature from today can only occupy this timeline if he's not on this timeline or this timeline doesn't contain what you want, you have to understand that only a different you can occupy a different timeline. The you from today, if you want to maintain the same you tomorrow, can can only occupy your current trajectory, your current script. All the other timelines are reserved for different version of yourself. What you're thinking, I don't know how people got this idea, that you're going to jump on a timeline where he's different, but you're the same right? You're the same. You haven't changed anything about yourself. Just he's different. And you're just going to walk in there and just occupy that space. It's never going to happen. Okay. I have yet to hear from somebody who said I stayed exactly the same. And then all of a sudden my SP came. Now SPs come back all the time because they want more sex from you, but you know, they leave you five times over. I'm yet to hear from somebody who said I stayed exactly the same. My SP came back. And now we've been married for three years. I'm yet to hear that. If that was your situation, I'd love to hear from it. But if your SP came back as a changed man, it is very likely you either manifested him via letting him go completely and not wanting him, doing it my way, like it's him or better. It's him or the person that matches me. Or you've changed significantly inside to accommodate for this. Do you guys understand what I mean? Okay, now Queen with this question. When you're saying other guys are conforming, I want you to understand that your power is in the now moment, okay? And your signature, if you have changed and if you understand and if you have this talent and if you see the results, you got to internalize these results and you got to go with the flow of these results, okay? Because if you don't, it's like you're telling the universe, you're not delivering to me. This is not what I said. This is not what I want. So, if you're manifesting, if you're saying all guys want me, everybody calls me back, um, interesting and mesmerizing, and they're repeating these words to you, and you're like, no, I still don't want them. You're telling the universe that you haven't executed correctly. The universe may stop altogether executing, right? Because it's obviously executing correctly. What happens is your old SP, this long-term relationship, has this ingrained identity of you in his mind. And because whatever's formed in his mind, like when the past has passed, it's very difficult to change the past. Okay. What's very easy is to tune into the probability of the future because the future has different probabilities. And it's very easy via our letting go of the past and aligning with the future to jump, to collapse a certain probability. But you cannot do what you're trying to do right now is you're trying to change the image that he has of you in the past because you you don't have access to him right he's not coming back you're not he's not in your life is what i'm understanding this is very difficult to do it is very very difficult to do this is why i'm saying it could be a lot of lost time wasted time loss of life and instead of that you can just focus on him or better this is my advice about the sp i have nothing more to say about manifesting a certain sp i think the more obsessed you are with him he can never be obsessed with you first of all as long as you're obsessed with him okay he's gonna he may may become obsessed with you when you stop being obsessed with him but he will never become obsessed with you while you're obsessed with him if you're there doing this work for him he's over here you're over here you're trying to climb to get to him. Forget it. Forget it. So if you're not willing to prioritize yourself, put yourself first, what is good for my future? And if all you're doing in this work is trying to change the impression of the past that he has of you, it's going to be very difficult. That's like, that's like doing it from 3D, in my opinion. Okay. I've been manifesting him for a long time, says Crystal. And this weekend, I saw a third party. I don't know how to keep doing it with no contact and persistence. It's exactly what I said. Watch this live again. It will be posted on YouTube. 
watch, go through my YouTube channel. Um, sorry, go through my SP playlist that's here on TikTok and learn to think about this differently. Okay, learn to put yourself first. Stop manifesting him. Manifesting him means you're obsessed with him. You're obsessed with him. He's not obsessed with you. He can't. There's no space. There's space only for one person to be obsessed. And it's you. you get it? I feel for, for my queens who are not yet at the level where they can put themselves first. I, I wish I could convince you of your value and your worth. I wish I could. I wish I could do better. I, I ask for inspired words all the time to give to brokenhearted women, honestly. Because I want you to see your value and to stop manifesting a specific person and being more and more obsessed every day. We had this queen in my group um, last year and she said, I need to manifest this guy. I, told, I gave her the same speech. And then she said, um, you know what? I got a text from him and he said, I'm in your area. Can I come in? What do you think? And I said to her, I said, is this what you want for him to come in? Like, has he said anything? Has, she's like, no, I don't feel like I, th I think he's, he wants to use me again, you know? So I said, okay, well, it's not good enough. Can I come in? Then a month, then she didn't hear from him. She said, no, he went away. He didn't say anything else. He came back. No, he didn't come back after that. After that, she checked out his Facebook page because she had blocked him. One month later, four weeks later, there was pictures from his wedding to a, with a third party. And then she's coming to me crying. And I said, listen, four weeks ago when he said, can I come in? He was engaged, right? He was, wasn't he? Right? Because since he got married a month later. So imagine that he would have been willing to come in and use you one more time. Like he didn't, he didn't message you, say, I desperately need to talk to you. I got engaged. I think I made a mistake. I really want you. I don't know what's going on. Like he, he was like, can I come in? And when she said no, he just went away. I think she dodged the bullet. It's like that, guys. Put yourself first. Put yourself first. Imagine if she let him in, he used her, and then she saw the photos. We're, we're worth so much more than that. Now, where was I? Um, that was the SP. Okay, this one's really good because I just got an update this morning. So she sends me this email. This is, again, somebody from our group. She sends me this email, maybe I want to say on Wednesday. And um, this morning she sends me an update. So she says, after two sets of the 60-day challenge, everything was going right for me. I bought myself a beautiful apartment. I found a great partner and I was in a good promising relationship. I got a promotion and salary increase at my job. So I know that I created all that through this work. The last five to seven days of my second challenge, I was on vacation with my extended family for a baptism. So I still continue doing the challenge, but not as focused because I didn't have my space and my time to do it properly. So I felt a decrease in my vibration triggered also by my relatives behaviors. After this, it was harder for me to restart. It took me about two weeks to do it. Now I'm on day 10 again. Sorry. When I came back from that family trip, I started seeing faults with my SP for the smallest things. And I was annoyed by things that I wasn't usually. So I started questioning if it's the one for me. And in less than one week, I managed to sabotage this relationship. Um, let's see. I managed to sabotage this relationship right after I left for work. Two days after I left for work, I impulsively broke up with him through a message and told him not to text me anymore. And I'll contact him when I get back and how to send me the things that I left in his place. I regretted it the next day, but I was hoping he will text me back, which he didn't. It's been a week now. I'm going back to my country in three days and I will text him to bring me my things. I really hope we will get back together. So basically she's made a mistake and now she's she wants to, you know, when you make a mistake and you don't want to admit you made a mistake, now you're like, <laughs> you're like going deeper in the mistake. I'll text him to give me my things back. She's saying I also faced issues in my job. I had a line check. My examinator wasn't happy anyways. They want to take back the promotion um, that they gave her. Um, 
I'm aware that I created all this and I'm meditating, doing affirmations, the 60 day challenge, yoga, working out. And I started the self-discovery questionnaire. The problem is I'm going in spirals. One day I feel like I'm in control of my thoughts, vibration, and I'm hopeful knowing that it takes a while until 3D will catch up with my good vibration and I'll get back my SP. Because I know how he feels for me and I will improve my job or even change it for a better one. Today's one of those days I woke up crying, so I decided to contact you. Thank you for your time, etc. So the key, let me just open this a bit because it's getting hot in the car. The key in this email is the fact that she's worked so hard on herself. She's gotten to buy an apartment, to be in a productive relationship, to get a promotion by doing the 60 day challenge, right? So then she says, I went to a baptism and I spent whatever she said, a week with my family and I got triggered nonstop to the point where I started to see faults in my SP and I broke up with him. I want you guys to understand something very important about paradigm and manifestation. We can never get rid of our demons, really, really, okay? We can only learn to live above them. But the moment those demons or the memory of them is triggered, you're going to drop Okay, and the fastest this this happens the fastest when you're around people that remind you of those demons that remind you of your old self. So with the family, when you hang around your your family from you know back in when you were a kid, aunts and uncles, I'm assuming, and everything, they will trigger in you the exact persona that you were when you were different. Now you've done all the spiritual work on yourself, okay? Like for a year, for six months, for what have you. You've manifested this new life for yourself and you're thinking there's stability in this life. There's stability in this. But the life that you manifest only has to do with your self-image. This is why a lot of people can easily manifest something but then lose it again, okay? Because they can raise their vibration for a short amount of time. And then they drop back down. So in an environment where you are all of a sudden sur surrounded by your extended family, by etc., they're going to your vibe unless you're in awareness of how you react to them and how their words sound to you. If you're not in awareness of that, or if they can't trigger in you the same reaction, please don't call me. I don't take calls during my life. If they trigger in you the same reaction, you gotta understand that you have not made permanent changes and your changes are hanging by a thread, which is fine because right now you're building that thread to be into a solid pillar, but it will take time, right? If for 30, 35 years, you're a certain way. Now in the last year, you became different. You've gotten all these different results. Do not assume you can just keep the results unless you can keep your self image. So ideally signs of real change are this. You are around your extended family and you realize that you you see yourself in a sense spiritually superior, okay? And I'm assuming these are people who are not doing the work, they're not working on themselves, they're just going on autopilot day to day. And because of that, because you see yourself as spiritually superior, you got to understand that you have to have, feel compassion for them, okay? I have grown women come to coach with me and then they say my mother and my mother is my source of my mother their mother is an old lady like 65 70 years old and they still impact this grown woman's life she's like 35 her mother's like 65 and, and, and I'm like no, no, you have to have compassion for your mother. The way your mother triggered you when you're 25 cannot be the way she triggers you when you're 35. This means you haven't grown at all, right? Who cares about, just, just look at her, but just like this old ladies, you know, like, you know, with their, their, you know, it's based on the prism of what they've gone through in life. And that's okay. You know, it's okay. It, it can't touch me. It can't touch me. I need, I know I need to listen to my uncle telling me about how the economy is going to shit and how the politics suck and whatever. And I can listen from a detached perspective because I have compassion for him, because I don't wanna cut him off. But none of these ideas are mine. I don't need to argue against them. I don't need to dispute anything. I don't need to do anything. I just need to be here for him. I'm here for an old man, just cheering him up, okay? So this queen in the story, okay? Which is a story so relatable, right? Like creating something and then losing it. Let me see. So, oh, I replied to her. I said, I'm going to answer to you on, on the live. And then I said to her, um, do not text him that you want your things back. Just don't do it. 
okay? Just go back home and just don't do anything until I get on this live, okay? Because what I, I wanted to make the speech to her and then also I wanted to say, guys, if you've made a mistake and you know you made the mistake because of your dropping in vibration, you cannot, it's not always the other person that is wrong, okay? But I kind of had the sense that as soon as she's going to come back, that vibration of the triggers is going to go away and the universe, because she's caught up with the group, she's caught up, she's doing this work, it will reset for her. So I said, don't do anything. Just sit back. Don't do anything. So this morning, she sends me an email. Queen, I was waiting for your live like a kid waits for Santa. I did what you said. I didn't text him. And half an hour ago, he showed up at my house without telling me. He drove 250 kilometers. We are together in a restaurant right now. He is at the toilet. We didn't open any discussion yet, just speaking generally. I'm not going to be able to go on the live, but I will watch it in the morning. Oh man, I love it when I'm right. Okay, so this is exactly what, what I was, I'm, I'm happy for her results, but I'm also happy. See, we think this manifestation is all about doing, but sometimes it's not about doing, it's about resting, just waiting for the energy. If you at a certain vibration have obtained results, all you should have to do to reset is get back in that vibration. Stop chasing, stop chasing stop chasing okay how to grow into a high vibration do the 60 day challenge in my bio do the questionnaire listen to my content listen to my lives stop thinking you can just assume something and it can come true by the way the law of assumption is real it's just that people can't make the assumption and can't sustain assumptions that's why it's not working for you you have to do the work my way i'm here for the people who have failed at assuming things um because it's very very few people can hold an assumption What's your perspective on when everyone is you pushed out? I, I talked about this at length in several lives. I'm going to give you the summary. Um, every every one you interact with is, is a lesson for you, okay? Evolution, our consciousness evolves through love and pain. And the overall consciousness needs both. But what you return to it is a choice. This is how this game is made fair. So you can choose to avoid the lessons in pain. Everyone is you pushed out. Sure, I have light and darkness in me. But when I'm going to meet that jerk who is not going to show me the image of me that I want to hold of myself, I'm going to say, I'm not going to take this lesson. I'm not going to try to change him to internalize this pain for him to show me. I'm not. Now, you can choose to internalize that lesson. You can be like, no, I'm going to prove to him my value. I'm going to spend my time right now and my life energy convincing this person of my value, convincing him that there's more love and light inside of me that he should really value me, right? But I can, I can choose to see it, wow, there is some darkness in me. I'm going to work on that, but I'm going to work on it in the absence of, of this jerk, of this reflection of my darkness. I don't want this reflection. I got it. Okay, I got it. There's still stuff I need to work on. See you, John. I'm going to go work on it. I got it. I'm not going to do it while you're around here. Get it? Putting myself first. <sighs> what if you're in a relationship and you're putting yourself first? This changed nothing in him. If you're putting yourself first and you weren't before, this is a different relationship dynamic and he should react to it. So I'm not really understanding. Now he may react in the negative to it. So unless you're putting yourself first all the time, but he was never returning any love to you because he just doesn't care about you. Mona, I got unexpected money come my way after I got my policy paid out. It felt great. And you're part of our group, aren't you? So you gotta, you gotta put that uh, on the Facebook group because it's part of our $100,000 challenge for the group. Somebody wrote today, Vanessa, count 10,000 for me, unexpected. I was like, I only manifested three thousand. No, one fifty dollars and one three thousand dollars. But people in my group have manifested sixty-five thousand. Somebody sixty thousand. Somebody else, and pretty much fifty other people have manifested like three or four figure amounts. I'm excited because money is important. You know, I, I I know it can be done. It just you know it can be done in proportion to how you think about money. But money is important um, because it allows us to be more relaxed, right? So, 
I have one more here that I want to read. Then I'm going to take some questions from you guys. Um, she says, I have, this queen says, she starts with, I love you so much. That always catches my attention. Thanks, queen. I love you guys too. I have a question for you about manifesting your SP, but in reverse, sorts of. What if I manifest someone away from me? I did such a fantastic job of manifesting my existing relationship, 10 out of 10, using your instructions. And I discovered exactly what you said. I was manifested, manifesting with sheer will, and in two weeks, something insignificant would happen to trivial un unraveling. So she's saying, with my techniques, she was able to manifest a 10 out of 10, but she couldn't sustain it. That's, that's basically her point. So she's saying, I was manifesting with sheer will, and in two weeks, something insignificant would happen to trickle an unraveling. All programs overcame my partner. If I let up to the slightest second, our relationship would show red flags again, for a lack of better words. So this is the problem, right? When you're manifesting from sheer will and your focus is in changing something about your partner. It's the problem is, like, I wish it just didn't work, then you could move on but it does work, okay? It works if you keep your focused energy on it 24 seven, okay? And especially depending what chords you have with that person, depending if they're in your life, etc. But you're not going to be able to sustain this focus. And this is what she's saying. If I would let up a little bit, right? Because you can't have your sustained focus manifesting your weight, your sustained focus manifesting money, your sustained focus making your relationship 10 out of 10. It's exhausting. You're not, you're not omni, omnipotent. You're not God. You can't do that, right? Manifestation should really be used from changing timelines, for changing your self-image, from changing yourself from within so that 3D reflects. Again, the printer. If it's you got a sheet of paper with errors, you go back to the computer. You don't try to correct the paper. So she's saying, I, I need, this is her husband she's talking about, actually. I need to manifest a path of separation and I have kiddos. Do you have any tips for someone who just can't cut and run or simply stop texting, right? So she can't cut and run or stop texting this person. She can just block him. And she continues, when he's emotional, he has gotten reactionary and vindictive in the past. So I don't wish to condemn him, but this is what I'm expecting. He has given information to me that he's very unhappy if I divorced him, etc. So she wants like a clean break. She's saying, I even want a 10 out of 10 for him. I want him to be happy. She's basically exhausted of keeping this manifestation on him and having to work so hard energetically to just have a peaceful life. So the fear is in this. And remember, fear will always prevent you from manifesting. When he's emotionally has gotten reactionary and vindictive in the past, so she's expecting more of the past. So I don't wish to condemn him. Now there's a judgment. There's a fear there. I don't wish to condemn them. But this is what I'm expecting, which is topped off by the assumption that this is exactly what's going to happen. And in this key paragraph, you have the past. You, you have you taking input from the output, because this is what has done in the past. You don't wish to condemn him. You have this judgment against yourself that you're condemning him. And how can you think badly of him? And then you top it off by the assumption, this is what I'm expecting. So between those three things, that's exactly what's going to happen. It's just too much going on in your paradigm, in your fears, in your the judgment you have of yourself as you know, I, I never advise women to leave their husbands or stay with their husbands. So I don't want to get involved in those kind of topics. I'm just telling you about what's going on inside your mind. Okay. And inside your mind, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot that you need to unpack. There's the fears that you need to unpack. There's the safety thing you need to unpack. You don't want to deal with the aftermath, which you already know it's going to be terrible. And, and so you're spending your life. You got to understand it's like a bandaid. When you take it off, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, right? It's just, it, it's all about first convincing yourself that you're going to be okay either way. You're going to be okay either way. And he's going to be okay either way right? And everything that comes your way, you're going to be able to deal with it. But the lesson that I wanted everybody to take out of this is the fact that you can change a relationship um, to be a 10 out of 10 with incredible amount of effort, which you're not going to be able to sustain. You shouldn't have to pour your whole life energy into making a relationship work. That's not what your life energy is for. 
And automatically, you're putting that relationship above yourself. Automatically, you're telling your system, I'm not going to be okay without this, or I'm not going to be able to handle the consequences of this not working out. So the moment you do that, you're subconscious here, you're not worthy, you're not strong, you're not capable, you're, you just can't deal with this. You just so you you need to keep status quo because remember what our ego wants the ego energetic system is to be safe and to be preserved into the same energy system right it doesn't want you to grow it doesn't want you to leave it behind it makes sense right and every energetic system is fighting for its survival so that's that's basically what I had on that one. Um, I just put out an exercise, guys. I want everybody to do it. I did it like a few minutes before I started this live. And I think I need to um, turn on the car. Just give me a second. Put on the AC. So I put out an exercise a few minutes before I started this live. And the exercise has to do with listing out. Let me see. I have this call on this. I want everybody to do this. Okay, if you guys know my content and stuff, I'm all about practicing all of these concepts. To me, if you tell me anything, if you give me any lesson and I can't put it into practicality in my life, that lesson is useless. You know, unless I read a novel and that's just for entertaining or, but if I read any self-help, self-development, and if I can't apply it in my life, just listening to it and just intellectually understanding it is a waste of time unless I can put it in practice. So my whole philosophy about doing this account and working with people is I have to give you things that you can do to actually forward your practice, to move it in a certain direction. This is why I have the questionnaire that I put out, this exercise that I want everybody, not just my group to do, but everybody, okay? So you're gonna do three columns. This is for energetic cords, okay? A lot of people feel they have energetic cords. They know, they know intuitively that there's someone in their lives holding them back. So I said make three columns. These are the people you love or you loved. These are the people you hate or you resent. These are the people you touched. Obviously, it refers to intimate touch. And what you're going to do is you're going to list out all the people you love right now. And this obviously includes your family, includes your current man, includes maybe your past man if you still love him, includes everybody you love, okay? And you're going to put two other columns here and you're going to be like in the past the intensity of my feeling for this person between one and five was a five let's say this is your high school boyfriend John now the intensity is zero I completely I can say I moved from that relationship this person has no cords to me the second one let's say Mark maybe this is your ex from last year I felt for him around three there's still something there around one I don't know sometimes I hate this guy by the way, Mark can be both here and here, okay? And assess the intensity of feeling. And with the people you touched, obviously, um, it, can't, it can't be two columns, but you should indicate a number between one and five in regards to the passion that you felt that you shared with them. And with some people, you know, if you, if you had multiple partners, you know, this number could be zero. You know, it could be just something you did when you were drunk, could be something. So if the intensity is zero, Okay, those are the easiest to let go of. They still, everybody who touches you because the sexual act is such a creative act and it can never be not a creative act. Um, they leave an energetic imprint in you. But with the people that you kind of felt zero for, what I want you to do instead of thinking of them is I want you to forgive that version of yourself that decided to go for a person that was going to return nothing. Okay, because really in this practice of manifestation, what you're saying you want your life to be is you give out energy, but you expect return, right? I give my energy to do a practice or to do a business and I expect money. I do this practice, you know, to slim my body and I expect results. I do this practice to manifest an SP and I expect to be married, right? So if you give anything energetically to somebody i'm not talking body like you know like it's not a judgment thing if you give your energetic things to someone you expect return the fact that you didn't expect returns then it's not who you are today today you gotta expect return on every energetic investment otherwise you're training the universe to not give you a return on any of the other area are you clear on this 
So the people you know you shouldn't have let touch you or there was no return in them touching you. I want you to go through it and be like, when I was, think of yourself as that woman you were like three years ago, four years ago, last last week, you know, and, and, and just say, I am no longer, I forgive her because she didn't expect a return. It's not the case now. Now I expect a return, whether it's energetic, emotional, spiritual, a return into my security for my future, a return. It has to be a return. Do you guys understand this concept? Sandra says, I want to either get over my SP or getting back or some better. <laughs> How does that work? How does this work work with the chart? This chart? Where is he? In what column is he? You love, you hate, you touched, you obviously touched. By the way, this instruction is, is terrible. You either want to get over him or you want to get him back or you want someone better. <laughs> what did I tell you, Sandra? I want you to stay focused on the outcome. It has nothing to do with your SP. It has nothing to do with you getting over. You cannot force yourself to get over somebody. It, what is the outcome you want in terms of your romantic life? Right? It, did you watch my own SP stories when I let him go and he came back? My, my outcome, my focus is on my outcome. I wish to be remarried to a man that fulfills these requirements. And it happened that it was him. Right? You want him or better. But you want what out of life? Listen to me. I want to be remarried in a wonderful marriage. I want. That's what I need this SP or better for. The SP or better is the vehicle through which my goal is accomplished. Right? Because what I want is that interaction with a man on a day-to-day -day basis. Whatever marriage means to me and can bring to me. That's the goal. I don't want him or better even. Okay? I want my outcome. So you just stay on the outcome. Have you defined the outcome that you want? When I go through this with women, I realize that the majority of women, except, except if you're young, okay? And you know, I want to get married and have two kids, okay? A lot of people just say that. But if you've gone past a certain age, a lot of women are actually very confused about what they want. Oh, but I want to keep my independence and I don't really want to live with somebody and I don't, but it would be nice to have somebody once in a while, but it would be nice, but I don't want him to cheat on me, but I want him to be loyal to me and I want him to still financially contribute to my life, but I don't want to have to explain myself to him. Like it's this whole, like the outcome is completely undefined. If you still love him for now, just do this exercise. Does this work even with friendships? Like in terms of the exercise, does it work with friendships? Your friendships, 100% should add value to your life. Remember, our biggest asset has to return results. Investing my biggest asset into anything has to produce results. Right? My biggest asset is my time my time if I give my time to a friend it has to give back to me the whole energy system has to give back to me whether that's peace in my heart whether that's the stability of knowing that when I message my best friend within an hour I get a reply you know depending what she's doing um, it, it just it just depends right like when I invest my biggest asset in my business I need returns or I'm in the wrong business when I invest my biggest asset into a man I need returns Hello, stop investing your biggest asset, not expecting returns. Even when I invest my asset into working with animals, I get returns, get to hold them and feel really good. And you know, I get an emotional return on my investment, feeling good about myself. Get it? What's the exercise? I just posted a video about it um, right before I got on this live. So it's the last video on my um, account. Do that exercise. Let's see. I want to see if I missed any questions that um, could have benefit to everybody. When I affirm people are drawn to me, I immediately think they all want to take something from me. Yeah, but they do. And that's normal. Right? Do not think of that as fear. This, if you're thinking of it as fear, it's like you fear 
I do not have the appropriate return for them. If when somebody's investing in you, it is appropriate for them to get a return, but you decide on what that return is. So change this concept into yes, you know, um, this guy is drawn to me. I made him be drawn to me. He expects a return. What return am I prepared to give him? And for what investment? Right? Him being drawn to me is just a validation to my ego. Obviously, he's drawn to me, you know, like, because I'm his type. If I'm not his type, he wouldn't even be in my life. But if I'm his type and he's coming after me, um, he's drawn to me. Okay? Validation to my ego. Check. Now, let's look at the exchange. I'm investing my time. What am I getting out of it? Okay? I should want to contribute something to his life. Maybe I look at him. I'm like, he can't make a big enough contribution to my life for me to return anything to him. Even a phone call, even a 20 minute conversation, definitely not my body, definitely, you know, because I can't see the return that he's not able to provide me that the return that I require, or he's able to provide me the return. He has the capacity. Does he have the willingness to provide the return? It's normal. Yeah. He wants something from me. I decide when I give that something, I give that something. I want to see the investment first. Remember, you define the rules, the, the, the rules for your life. They're up to you to define. You live in a time, guys, guys, my queens, okay, this is for the women. We live in a time that's, it never happened for women this way. Women are forced to do things a certain way. They are forced to marry. They are forced to depend on men. They were forced into housework. They were forced into all of these choices, okay? Now we can define the rules for our lives. And what do we do with this freedom? We give ourselves for free to men. And then we wonder why we're damaged, why we feel like shit, why we're always rejected, why we're always, you know, stop. You just need better rules for yourself. You just need to define your rule set differently. For my time investment and energetic investment, what do I expect in return? Now I'm going to assess the next guy through the prism of this value system. Where's your value system? This is my value system. Maybe my value system is I just want to have, it doesn't need to be big. I just want to have a guy to go to events with, to go to movies with. In exchange for that, I'm prepared to kiss him a little, but you know, I don't think I'll sleep with him for that. Okay. So you find like a nice friend for that, or, you know, like a semi quasi relationship. I'm not here to tell you, you can only look for marriage, right? But if you want marriage, do not pretend you don't care whether or not he's going to give you marriage. I hope that was clear. Guys, put more value on yourself. Use your freedom of choice to define a rule set of what you're actually looking for. Um, Mona, do you have a free calendar for one-on-ones? Oh, you mean for coaching? Um, yeah, I have I have two appointments available a week. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure. I don't I didn't check if they're taken or not for this week. Um, I can only do two hours a week because I'm, you know, I have other businesses and stuff like this. So um, it's in my bio. Is it not there? It, it should be there for the coaching for one on one. Let's see. The one who is generous and good provider. What are we talking about here? Um, I have two SPs. What do I do? <laughs> I don't want to make the wrong choice. <laughs> you don't have anything then. You don't have anything. The best thing you can do is focus on the outcome and the right SP will just step forward. What is it that you want? The outcome is not a specific man ever, ever. The outcome is what that man represents in your life. What is it he can give you? Okay. You might have a man who wants to be with you 24 seven, but you don't want that. You don't want that. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you have your friends. You, you want to travel sometimes with a girlfriend. You don't want a man who's on you 24-7. And so if you just focus on the outcome you want, that outcome will step forward. What you're focusing now is which one, you know, focus on what you want as an outcome. I, I don't know. I have to repeat this. So like, it's not a difficult concept, eh? I don't know. St stop putting men on the pedestal, or if you're a man, stop putting them, you know, it, it's just, what is the outcome? You're a man. I want to get married. I want my wife to be this, to be a housewife or to produce an income or to whatever you want. Just define it. 
And you have to give up everything that's not that. If you stay focused on the outcome, I promise you, you will get it. But what people do, they're like, oh, I don't want to start all over again. I know this is not what I want. It's not really what I want, but I guess it's okay. You know, it's just okay. If I start all over again, oh, I'm old. Um, it's like the dating market is just hookups. I'm going to be alone. I'm going to have to split my house. I'm going to, you know, okay. Those are legitimate concerns. So stay. Don't come and manifest. And because manifestation and reality creation requires such inner honesty. You have to be so honest with yourself. And so honest about, but not just in your head. You have to be honest in your behavior. What you do in 3D matters. 3D is old and it doesn't matter. But what you do in 3D matters immensely in terms of instructing your subconscious of what you want more of. So if you're not in the relationship that you want, being in that relationship and taking it, taking it, okay, means you want more of it. That's the instructions you put out. You're not telling the universe, I don't want this anymore and I want better. You're saying, this is fine, right? Because what you do at the end of the day, you go home, it's the same shit. And you're like, yeah, but I'm not going to change anything because I don't want to be alone and I don't want to split my house. Okay, it's not, it's no problem. It's your choice. That's your free will. After I do the questionnaire, should I bring that to the one-on-one -on -one coaching? Sure, um, if, if that's what you want to do. You can, you can definitely do that. It's going to take the full hour to go over that and talk about your uh, findings. So book the session. Uh, send me the questionnaire um, and then let's talk about how you interpreted the results and, um, you know, how, how I read it in terms of your interpretation. Thank you. That helps a lot. It's not just guys, though. Yeah, it's not just guys. Okay, guys, I think we're near the end. I think I took up all the questions. If I missed something, if you're part of my group, you can email me. I understand not everybody can afford one-on-one -on -one coaching. Or I might not have the space for it. And um, if you are in my group and I feel your question benefits everyone, I'll take it up at my next live. Um, I'm going to try to come on again. As you guys know, I'm managing other responsibilities, um, businesses, um, family. And I'm planning a wedding, which is harder than I thought. I finally got a wedding help planner thing. My wedding is in July. I'm marrying my SP, guys. Results. Results. Okay, let's put our hands together for the 369. If you guys don't want to do the tapping, this is for nervous system reset. I use the affirmation, I am a winner. We tap three, six, and nine times. You tap with me if you don't want to do it. We'll see you next week, Monday, at the same time. One breath together. I am a winner. 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 I am a winner.